Hello, Roy. Uh, let me ask you another question on the insulin, insulin resistance in PCOS, the role of metformin, which I know you have views about. Uh, let's go to how we differ from endocrinologists who believe that in PCOS with metabolic syndrome, uh, you know, metformin works. While we take a, a completely opposite stand as gynecologists, that metformin has not been proved to work. Now, physiologically or pathophysiologically, do you think that metformin, which does lower insulin resistance and gives regular periods, may have a role to play? Well, uh, endocrinologists or proper doctors as we know them, unlike the uh, gynecologists, uh, use metformin uh, for slightly different purposes. Uh, they use it uh, for uh, improving insulin sensitivity on its own for uh, pre-diabetic, diabetic, diabetic uh, patients. As gynecologists and as fertility specialists, then we would like to use it for, uh, in particular for ovulation induction in women with PCOS. And the reason for this is uh, a very large number of women with PCOS, in particular uh, those who are obese, have insulin resistance. And insulin resistance can be improved by giving metformin, uh, usually in a dose of uh, three tablets a day, uh, this varies uh, between countries, but that is the, the, the usual dose. Now, I've been somewhat opposed to this for several reasons. First of all, uh, for ovulation induction, it's been distinctly proved that both clomiphene and letrozole give a much better rate of ovulation and of pregnancy as compared with metformin. Metformin is slow, the response is slow, and the ovulation comes much later, if at all, than you would expect with clomiphene or letrozole. And thirdly, uh, the side effects of uh, metformin uh, can be most unpleasant. 15 to 20 percent of women who take metformin because of the gastrointestinal side effects will stop taking it uh, and this is a big drawback. So altogether if you want to use metformin in gynecological practice you can use it for ovulation induction in PCOS patients but you can expect a, a slow response and possibly with some uh, side effects and today there are better alternatives. Uh, coming to our next question, which gets linked to uh, the, que the answer which you just gave. We see a high proportion of immature eggs or empty follicles or poor quality eggs in PCOS. Is it a problem with PCOS per se? Can it be corrected by metformin? Can we do something which can give us more mature eggs? With PCOS, uh, we're almost always going to get more eggs uh, than we do with women uh, with normal ovaries. So the fact is, if you get more eggs, then you're more likely, mathematically, to have more which are uh, immature. The relation of this to insulin resistance is, is uh, rather spurious. So giving metformin or uh, something that improves insulin sensitivity uh, may not really help there, except maybe in one respect. Uh, when metformin is given well before an IVF cycle starts, if the patient is insulin resistant, then metformin seems to cool down the response. So in fact, we're much less likely uh, to have a problem with ovarian hyperstimulation syndrome with metformin uh, rather than without it. Thank you, Roy. Uh, my next question is how does myo-inositol, or we call it inofolic, work? Why do endocrinologists use it all the time? And we continue to suspect it. 
Myoinositol uh, is an insulin sensitizer uh, and it has been proposed that this would help uh, in the same way that uh, metformin uh, would help or would do it even better. As I said, endocrinologists uh, are uh, proper doctors, uh, but to our credit as gynaecologists, we want to see some evidence-based medicine that's going to tell us that uh, inositol really works, the myo-inositol really works uh, for either ovulation induction or during uh, pregnancy. Uh, and at the moment, uh, this evidence is not forthcoming, although it is on the way also in our uh, own study. It'll probably be good, but it's a little bit early to tell. And my final question, Roy, is, is this something which gynecologists see very often? We don't see it in fertility. And these are, this is a young woman who is in her 20s, who does not want any children and has symptoms of PCOS, uh, it's mild hirsutism, uh, irregular periods, you know, mildly obese. And we see these women coming to clinics, mainly in gynecological practice, very often. And often we get asked is, can we treat the PCOS uh, outside fertility? And what would be your advice regarding this? The simplest and probably one of the best treatments is, is the uh, combined oral contraceptive. And this is for several reasons. Uh, one, uh, it's easy to take. Uh, two, it will regulate the uh, periods, uh, which psychologically can be uh, good and it keeps up uh, the uh, withdrawal bleeding. Three, it will lower the LH and consequently will lower testosterone. You lower testosterone then you can actually get rid over a period of the uh, hyperandrogenic symptoms and, and this I think is pretty ideal uh, treatment for the patient uh, who does not want to get pregnant. There are preparations uh, in which the progesterone is more uh, anti-androgenic and these should probably uh, be preferred. Otherwise uh, we go back to the old chestnut of uh, metformin being used um, and uh, for several reasons uh, I don't think this is uh, ideal. I personally would prefer uh, the oral contraceptive uh, pill. Thank you very much Roy uh, and we'll see you again next time.